What is up guys? It's ya boy, Rick. Let's bring my wife on her anniversary into the Last Wish Raid and see how mad she gets. Cack is here. Guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to support the channel and let me know what you think my next intro should be. That comment section, it's absolutely wild. All right, today, firstly, I'm hyped up on that brand new Splitgate Rocket Pop Advanced GG flavor. Oh my goodness, the best energy drink out there. Guys, they've got so many flavors supporting all your favorite creators, including Cactus Kiwi Lime, which if I don't say so myself is absolutely delicious. Guys, use code KHD for a discount, link in description. All right. The video topic today is pretty interesting because uh, it, there's a weapon out there that I myself have been ignoring, but holy crap, the community as a whole has been ignoring as well. Its usage rate right now sits at 0.02%, unbelievably low, and this weapon is actually in contention for one of the best linear fusion rifles out there. So when you think linear fusion rifle, I mean, the sleeper simulant is unbelievable. The Lorenz driver is still a player in PVP. The Arbalist got a huge buff as well. But if you look at the legendaries and you wanna use a legendary linear in a build, which is a very common thing with particle deconstruction being the mod of choice when it comes to the PVE meta. It's really common to use legendary linear fusion rifles combined with a fusion rifle, especially if you're utilizing the Vex Mythoclast, you're going to use a legendary linear fusion rifle basically every time to pair with that and shoot enemies when they're already at times five buffed up from your Vex. So these are very common in the meta, but there's really two people think of when you talk about legendary linear fusion rifles. You're either going to utilize a threaded needle. In fact, this has the highest usage rates within the current PVE meta, and you're going to use this with Vorpal Weapon to increase damage against bosses and champions and stuff like that, combined with, you know, something like Auto Loading Holster, that's what I love to use, or even Rapid Hit, that's a great choice as well, or you're gonna utilize the harder to get, Reed's Regret. Now, you can either utilize it with Vorpal Weapon as well, combined with something like Triple Tap is gonna be phenomenal, but the Reed's Regret also has Firing Line, which is gonna do more damage than Vorpal, but is definitely gonna be harder to trigger and is only gonna be active in certain activities. So, make no mistake, any of those are powerful options. But there's a third weapon out there that everyone has forgotten about, the Corsair's Wrath Legendary Linear Fusion Rifle. And this again has that 0.02% usage rate. In fact, the Adept Reads Regret has 10 times more usage. That is unreal. People have to go flawless to even get that weapon and the Corsair's Wrath just comes from hunts. Like it's unbelievably easy to get compared to the Adept Reeves. So the Corsair's Wrath actually has access to the damage increasing perk High Impact Reserves. Rounds at the end of the magazine deal more damage. Now this is actually a perk that neither the Reeves or the Threaded Needle has access to. And previously, the reason everyone was utilizing these two weapons over the Corsair's Wrath was, and I remember doing a damage test of the Corsair's Wrath and you know the Threaded Needle and all of the available linears back when we heard that linears were getting buffed before Season of the Lost, and it turned out that the Corsair's Wrath was not doing that well in terms of damage. The Threaded Needle with Vorpal out DPS'd the Corsairs with high impact reserves. But something really interesting happened with the 30th anniversary. Vorpal Weapon got a nerf. It still does 15% bonus damage if it's on specials. It actually got a buff for primaries and now does 20% more damage, but for heavy weapons, which of course the reeds and the threaded are both heavy weapons, it now only does 10% bonus damage. So a 5% damage reduction. So I remember these weapons being close and I thought, well, is that actually gonna make a difference? So I went back to Cali and I'm using firstly a threaded needle with 
five shots with a projection fuse just so I don't mess up the damage. My Corsairs has liquid coils for more damage, but again, I had protect projection fuse for both of them. So very consistent damage. I'm using particle deconstruction for both of these tests because of course, if you're gonna use one of these, you're gonna use particle. And at the end of the day, five headshots from the threaded dealt 243,298 damage to Kali. So then I switched over to the Corsair's Wrath. Again, the only difference is I'm basically swapping out the now nerfed Vorpal for high impact reserves. That wasn't touched, wasn't nerfed at all. And now the Corsair's Wrath, five headshots with Particle is going to do... 249,117 damage. Now you may be saying, Rick, yeah, yeah, it technically won, but that's only the difference of a few thousand damage. But remember, it was only a 5% nerf. So literally every single Destiny 2 player was using the threaded and other options because it was only doing a few thousand more damage to begin with. Now, because of this nerf, I think everyone kind of forgot about the Corsair's Wrath, but I just showed it does more damage. One magazine of Corsair's does more damage than a threaded needle with Vorpal. This is a big deal. Now, Granted, the Threaded Needle does actually have better perk options in that first column. So, Auto Loading Holster is fantastic, and Rapid Hit is fantastic. The best the Corsair's Wrath can get is, in my opinion, Pulse Monitor to reload your magazine automatically when you're wounded, and it can also get Outlaw that is going to massively increase your uh, reload speed if you get a headshot. Definitely not difficult to do with a Linear Fusion. However, remember, Pulse Monitor also got a buff. Now, that is going to trigger when you're at 30% shields instead of previously it was 90% health. So, think about literally every single raid boss fight out there. If you're fighting the Templar, it's shooting you back. Now, everyone is going to survive because you're in a well, but it's common to take a considerable amount of damage and then just reheal because of the well. So, presumably, you have the chance to trigger Pulse Monitor multiple times in a raid damage phase if everyone is standing together and being shot by the boss. And again, the Templar, Atheon, Kali, Morgoth, the end boss of the new dungeon, like all of those boss fights, you're taking incoming damage, which is why everyone uses the well in the first place so that you can survive and tank that incoming damage. But you're gonna often take enough damage, wound yourself enough to be triggering Pulse Monitor. So I really do think a Corsair's Wrath with Pulse Monitor plus high impact reserves is actually going to be a very good option. Now, is it going to be better than especially the triple tap Vorpal uh, Reads Regret? Maybe not. Triple tap is unbelievably good, like holy crap, and that's going to trigger consistently and generate ammo out of thin air. But the point of this video was to say that the Corsair's Wrath is now in contention. It is something that you shouldn't ignore. It is very easy to farm for. Not only can you specifically do Wraithborn hunts that have it as a guaranteed reward, you can put on different modifiers where it's going to spawn with certain perks. So you can actually have a pretty decent chance to get the god roll of this thing and even if you're not getting it, you can also, as you can see right here, turn in your kind of Wraithborn tokens and outright get it from the crow on the Tangled Shore. Like, I actually got another High Impact Reserves one right here, just messing around for gameplay. So, this is definitely something that does not deserve a 0.02% usage rate. It has the potential to out-damage the most meta, most used choice out there, and I think this is really something you should consider getting before Wraithborn Hunts are going to be going away with the Witch Queen. Having this in your arsenal is a very very good idea. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.